Welcome to Awning Composer 5, Dynamic Objects Overview, Part 1. During this video, I'm going to show you what's different about these new dynamic objects compared to the other pre-built 3D models. I'm also going to show you how to get started with using these new dynamic objects and some of the new features and functionality. For this demonstration, I'm going to remove the ground and change the backdrop to a solid color. Next I'm going to go to the Add Object tab and go and grab one of the fixed frames. Next I'm going to go to Add Object and the new Dynamic tab to bring in the new dynamic version of the hip traditional. This fixed frame is a pre-built 3D model. So as you can see when I go to adjust the dimensions, the model is just stretched wider, taller, and longer. For the dynamic model, if I go to change the width, you'll see how it's dynamically changing as I make any adjustment to the dimensions. So based on the spacing that I have set, Awning Composer will rebuild the model each time I make an adjustment. As you can see with the fixed frame model, anytime I make these adjustments it just stretches or compresses the entire model together. It's not able to dynamically change. The new dynamic objects will actually be rebuilt on the fly each time an adjustment is made. Now let's take a closer look at the dynamic objects. Each dynamic object will have a parameter section. The parameter section will look different for every dynamic model based on what the needs are for that model. For this particular hip traditional, I have a slider bar to adjust the corner width. As you can see, each time I move the slider bar, the model will change as I'm making this adjustment. You can either use the slider bar or manually input the dimension or measurement that you want. Underneath the corner width, I have some options for my spacing. As you can see, as soon as I enter a new measurement for the spacing for the rafters, the main support and the corner supports, the model will instantly change and update based on what I've entered. If I want to add a rigid balance, all I need to do is check the checkbox beside the sign band height. You'll see that two more options now appear. To adjust the height of the sign band, I just simply enter the measurement that I want it to be. I can also adjust the spacing for the front and the side supports for the rigid balance. There's also an option to add a lacing bar. All you have to do is check the box beside the lacing bar height. Then you can just enter in a measurement for the height that you want the lacing bar. To remove the lacing bar, simply uncheck the checkbox. For every dynamic object, there will be a different list of various options. These will be different depending on which model that you choose. To help you see the construction of this model, I've checked the multicolored parts checkbox so you can see how each part comes together to make this awning frame. This is very helpful when looking at which bar that you want to be your master bar. You'll see from the masters tab you've got a list of different options to choose from. These are broken up into different parts of the awning such as the bottom, the front, the sign band bottom, and the sign band front. By looking at the drop down for each of these different sections, I can choose what I want to have as my master bar. As you can see on the screen, 
and the different colored parts of the awning. Each time I select a different master bar, you'll see the awning actually change its construction based on what you selected. Another option that you have on this is looking at and editing the trusses. For these on the hip ends, you can change the interval distance for each rafter on the hip end on the side and on the front. So here, by adding the fabric back, you can now see the frame that you've constructed as well as the fabric for the cover. Now by selecting a fabric color and also changing the frame color, you can see how the awning has really come to life. Thanks for checking out part one of the dynamic object overview. Be sure and check out part two and we'll go into more detail about the dynamic objects.